So we're here at uh, sunny Cheltenham. I'm with uh, Catherine Fry and uh, Dan Kelly. And we're going to look ahead to the big one now, the Cheltenham Gold Cup that takes place back here in uh, March. Catherine, it's um, a few, few months off yet, but at this stage, uh, quite difficult, I know. But have you got any long range fancies? Yeah, well, obviously, you, you, you can't discount Bobsworth. Uh, I don't even think he was he was at his best last year. I think he he, he wasn't right when he won here. He, he's four from four at, at the course. Uh, he, at this stage, you would look the most obvious winner. I'm certainly not going to bet against him. There's if there, there is a horse in in the projected betting for the Gold Cup that I think is a is a long price. People will laugh at me, but it's another Bob Boston Bob. He fell at the last in the Royal Sun Alliance when I'm convinced that he would have won. Made a beautiful sweeping move round the round the field. Was very unlucky to come down. Was just creeping into contention at Punchestown after that. Um, Sort of quite given some strange tactics that day, I thought, but sort of started to creep in, looked the likely winner, and went on the deck again. Just got to hope that that hasn't dented his confidence. Not really sure what his seasonal targets are. I know he, he features in an awful lot of markets, right through from the Paddy Power to the Hennessy and everything. But you'd like to think that he will come back here. He's obviously shown that he can handle the track. He was second in uh, Albert Bartlett to Brindisi Breeze. He was a sick horse that day. So you have to give him you have to give him a lot of credit for the way he fought there. Talking of which, I think uh, Willie Mullins wasn't actually totally happy with it, with him throughout last season. So potential for improvement, you think, this time around? Yeah, they, he, they were saying that oh, last season. They were saying there was something wrong with him, and they just couldn't get him right. So if you think that that was a horse that wasn't right, that ran that well in the still RSA, good still a good form. Just I'm, I am worried about the the two falls. You'd have to be, but as you say, we've got six months yet to go till Cheltenham. Willie Mullins is a genius. He's pretty sure he's not. He wouldn't. He wouldn't send him to a gold cuff unless he was absolutely teed up. I quite fancy him to run into a place at twenty-five to one. Bobsworth is my most likely winner for me at this stage. And no surprises there. But I, I would back Bobsworth each. Sorry, Boston Bob each way at twenty-five to one. Getting my Bobs confused. Thank you, uh, Dan. Uh, yeah, Bobsworth. I mean, uh, clearly pretty solid. Uh, beaten at the track, as Catherine says, four out of four. Uh, three to one. Would you say that would be a value price at this point in time? Um, well. Three to one, long way out. And you, you initially say no, and then you think, well, what he's got to beat. And then I'm, I'm not sold on the RSA form last year. Uh, so if he shows he's fit and well, I think you're probably looking at about six to four shot on the day. So I think that's that's, that's the long long term aspect where you want to take three to one now, uh, about probably six to four shot on the day. So for me, that leaves the options over for uh, the un. Possibly like an improving handicap at this time last year. If you look like Hunt, likes a Sunny Hill boy, uh, not Sunny Hill boy, sorry, synchronised who won the Gold Cup. Uh, it's, you're looking at something like that who could actually just improve throughout yeah, the season, yeah. surprise people. You're looking at last year and you had Katenko of uh, Venetia Williams, obviously uh, colic injury, so lucky, uh, obviously bring him back here in one piece if he does get here. So th the likes of that, I'll be, I'll be look, that, them are the angles I'll be looking at through the season. I think if Looking for a horse on a handicap or on a roll, basically. Yeah, and also I think this could be the year that Evan Elvis should look at giving a go. If you look at the likes of First Lieutenant, uh, Sir Deschamps didn't set the light, uh, the world to light last year. Fleming Star won't uh, stay the trip or get up the hill. Uh, and then you're looking at the likes of First Lieutenant, who, and then once you're getting past that, you're looking at 150 or 160 handicap chasers. If you get an improver, uh, I think the novice chase division is going to be very deep this year. Uh, so for me, that would be the one which I'll be looking at. Uh, an improving novice or an improving handicapper just to uh, frighten up uh, Bobsworth. Thank you. Friday. And we had an interesting uh, comment from David Smith on Twitter about Sir Deschamp. And he was of the opinion that perhaps Sir Deschamp, and it was kind of a question as well, uh, asking whether we thought it he was ridden a bit too handy in the race last year and with different tactics perhaps could go one better this time around. Yeah, I think it's an interesting angle. He's a horse that I thought would win last year's Gold Cup at the start of the season, and I find myself being a little bit underwhelmed with him all the way through the year. I just got the impression that Willie Mullins was never 100% happy with him, and Tony McCoy didn't seem absolutely happy with him in the Gold Cup either. He, he ended up pressing on um, much further from home than I had expected, tried to put pressure on, on long run. Um, and I'm wondering... It didn't strike me as a rush of blood to the head from Tony McCoy. That's very unlike him. I got the impression that he felt the horse was, was racing lazily and he wanted to wake him up and, and put him into the contest and get him jumping. Um, his jumping was very good when he won the juice in the previous year. You could knock the form of that now. Maybe it doesn't look as strong as it did at the time. And maybe we overrated him. But um, I think 
he's worth persevering with at least for the first half of the season and see if he gets that spark back because he'd looked um, an absolutely fantastic prospect before that. He was the only horse I was interested in for the Gold Cup at the start of last season. And while it may be that a few of us are just getting a little bit carried away with, with his unbeaten run up to that point, um, I think I would certainly give him at least one more chance to show that he retains all his ability and a little bit more. Um, I think he's the one horse from last year's Gold Cup who could be a little bit better than the bare form. Uh, I thought it was a, an intriguing race, um, the latest renewal of the Gold Cup, but I didn't think it was a great contest. And while Bobsworth was a worthy champion and goes into this season with less question marks about him than most of the others, uh, especially with, unlike the hurdling crown, um, last year's novices over hurdles looked fantastic. Last mm. year's chase novices Definitely. looked a very ordinary bunch, to be honest. So the old guard should be able to hold their own this year. But I'll, I'll be honest and say that you know um, the current long run and Bob's worth they're a little bit shy of, of the the superstars we've seen in the last few years. It may be that we were spoiled again and we've got to, we've got to deal with a slightly um, less stellar uh, group of Gold Cup horses this year. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see something come through. Um, I did mention Katenko earlier on. Um, he's, he's one of those who could, who could improve a huge amount this season. Uh, I mentioned Invictus for the Hennessy, and obviously he's only rated 145 at the moment, but he's a horse who could uh, develop through the ranks. Um, he'll have opportunities and handicaps, and he could come through and show himself to be a Gold Cup horse. Um, Simon Sig arguably the best of the novice from last year, but as Dave says, I don't see him staying in the Gold Cup trip. So you're struggling a little bit for, for new faces, and as... Um, as David suggested, I think um, I think Sir Deschamps might be one who's who's worth persevering with. So it's going to be quite an interesting season, really, with with potentially new ones. Literally, the new one in the case of the Champion Hurdle there coming through to for, for, to, to to try and get that crown, and possibly the same thing in the Gold Cup as well with uh, new horses coming coming through. They're going to have to really step up on what they did last season, though. They look no more than a bunch of high class handicappers, you'd have to say, in the RSA. They, they didn't look like a superstar in there. Uh, uh, you know, we've touched on Katenko, and I think he's he's possibly one that can break through um, into the ranks this year. But um, f from what you saw, you, you know, you'd have to say that they look no no better than a, uh, than top class handicappers, and, and, and that'd be it. Yeah, you're, you're looking for something left field essentially when you're wow. looking when you're looking at last season's novices, and there is the possibility that something will will improve another stone and a half or two stone this year, um, but you you have to think outside of the box to, to see that happening. I think that's a good point actually because you know I think in the last couple of seasons what we've seen is that we've seen good quality novices coming through but they don't always take in the, the, the sort of routes that you would expect them to take and I think now you may just be looking to handicap company for, for both hurdlers and chasers to come through. Boston Bob was mentioned by uh, Catherine as a possible lively uh, outsider. Uh, Dave I can tell you might have some thoughts on this by your expression. I think um, both myself and Rory might have the same thought here that um, I don't think uh, as good a horse as Boston Bob is. Um, the debate rages on as to whether he would have won or not here in the, in the RSA did not come down at the last. Um, my own opinion is that he was a tired horse. I thought he was done for at the last. I thought the, the move that he made, he made a move sort of four wide on the widest part of the bend and I, I just think it, it took too much out of him. He, had, he showed a terrific burst of acceleration for a, a, about 100 yards, 150 yards to, to sort of take him to the front but um, if you look at if you if you look at the race again, you know, look at the, the gap between uh, himself and uh, and his chasers at two out and one out. They'd already taken three quarters of length out of him, and he put that extra step in. He was a, I thought he was a, a tired horse personally, and I don't think he would have got up the hill. And I just as good as he is, I don't think he's quite got the quality to to win a Gold Cup. Anything to add to that, Rory? No, it's absolutely spot on um, from Dave. Uh, Paul Tynan, who rode him, made what looked a decisive move, but that's because it was turning into a messy race tactically. And he was the one who made the first move, which in the context of the race looked decisive briefly, but I think by the time they got to the last, he was, um, he was beginning to paddle. He, he might have right. held on. I'm not going to say absolutely he wouldn't have won, but he might have won a poor RSA which doesn't make him a Gold Cup contender in a month of Sundays. So just to sum up with a couple of uh, selections for the Gold Cup 2014, Rory? Uh, Bobsworth is a, is a, a worthy favourite for it at this stage, given, given his overall record. Um, looking slightly more left field. I'll, I know Dave's put him up for a different race, but I think Katenko might be the, the left field choice to come through the right. Um, and um, we won't write Sir Deschamps off just yet. Thank you, Dave. If a wheel ain't broken, JP, don't try to fix it. Bob's with all the way for me, and I have got to stick with Katenko as well. I think he's the one horse that could come through the roads this year and challenge. Thank you both.
And Gold Cup, Bobsworth would seemingly be, uh, the guys earlier were saying, uh, three to one could actually be quite good value. Might seem a skinny price this many months out, but when you look at the opposition... No, you'll get beat. It's as simple as that. Last year, uh, Bobsworth, if I remember rightly, was not travelling very well during the middle of the race. Stayed on in, in incredibly good workman-like fashion. Um, there was a horse in behind Silviano Conti, if I remember, was going far better than anything else in the, in the, uh, in the race and fell three out. Of course, that's no, no proof. It might be a Latin Lomni and doesn't stay. <laughs> we don't know that. Um, but it was travelling extremely well. Um, again, the, the, the Gold Cup was, uh, again, another short field event. Nine or ten runners off yep. the top of my head. I, 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 you know, if, we, if we've got a 15, 16 runner event, maybe we see a different result this year. Um, so, yeah, I would be against Bobsworth. It would be my natural tendency anyway as a bookmaker to be against these well-touted animals. It is an incredibly good horse. But I expect it to be an, a competitive race, and we've got a few more in the play, in the mix this year to beat it. Thank you.